Bernie Wall again. Here we are again. And uh, today I want to talk to you about um, something that I, a student said to me. So I've entitled this video, Is Band 7, Is IELTS Band 7 Enough? And I'll explain as we go through what led me to choose that topic. Um, because it was with working for a student who was getting band seven, but took the exam and didn't quite make the band seven. And it was the conversation we had after that. And it made me think about what does band seven actually mean? So I want to explore that a little bit and give you some pointers on how you can make sure that you do achieve your band seven when you go into the exam. Because getting it in your practice and getting it in the exam are not necessarily the same thing. Uh, before I leap into that, I just want to remind you that you can join my Facebook group, um, IELTS Band 7 and 8 Success um, Tips and Strategies. And you can also uh, join me on my website where there are some free resources and where I send out emails with um, other advice and other information. So if you want to get more information from me, those are the two ways that you can do it. And if you want to speak to me, I'm also open to that and discuss your IELTS and see where you are and what you need to do to improve. Then just send me a message here or in the Facebook group and I can then explain to you how uh, we can do that. Okay, so let's have a look at whether band seven is enough. And in fact, if you're hitting band seven, it's probably not enough if you actually want band seven. It's a little bit too close to call. And that's because in the exam itself, um, there's a lot going on that doesn't go on in the confines of your, your bedroom or your house, wherever you do your study. It's not the same experience. And the experience of the exam can change the way you uh, approach the tasks in the test. And that can lead to some of your, um, the parts of the test when you take it in the exam itself, uh, dropping below the scores that you previously got in your preparation. So the best way to solve that is to go more than band seven, because really band seven is probably just a little bit too close and you're going to have to get it by the skin of your teeth, and that doesn't always happen. Okay, so it could go either way. So this is my opinion. When students score 29 out of 30 in academic or 33 out of 40 in general training, listening or reading, um, my immediate reaction is, Ugh, that's the worst score, because you're just missing it. But sadly, it does happen. And it's cl too close and the result could go either way, as you can see is in quotation marks. And that's because my student that I was working with actually said this, because I said to him, yes, you can get your band seven. And he said, no, it's too close and the result could go either way. I need more than band seven. And it was very wise. He's correct. So you need a cushion, I would say at least half a band. So I tend to say, try and score 7.5 at least. And then in the exam, even if you have a wobble or if it's a difficult exam, you can still pull out your seven. Aim for eight if you need seven. You may not get to eight, but if you aim for it, then you're gonna at least get close. If you need eight, go for nine. Again, you may not get nine, but it means you're stretching yourself so that you're going to be as good as you possibly can be when you go into that exam room. Consistency is critical. To my mind, when a student says to me, um, oh, I get 35 out of 40 in my reading, my question is, every time? Well, no, sometimes it's 28, sometimes it's 26. That's not consistency. That means in the exam, you cannot be guaranteed your seven. You really must be getting 33, 34, 35, and in GT, you need to be getting 36, 37. 
almost every time you do a reading test under exam conditions you should be getting those scores and if you are then the likelihood is that you will get that in the exam if you're not then you're not consistent enough okay and you need to be a hundred percent confident that you can get it and that's by making sure that you can get these high scores almost every time it may not happen every time but it should be probably 90 95 percent of the time you do listening or reading or get your writing checked you should be hitting these higher scores of 7.58 to be sure of seven okay a lot of students work really hard but it doesn't always pay off. I know students who are desperate because they don't get their score and they have worked so many hours, they don't think that they can put in any more hours. And if you're in that position, then I feel for you because yes, possibly you cannot put in any more hours, but it's not always successful to work so many hours. Hard work equals success. We're taught that. We're taught that from being very young at school. If you work hard, you'll be successful. It's not true. That's not true. Sometimes you can work so hard that you have no time even to sleep and you still don't have success. So it's, it's really not fair to say that because it's not the case. But if you work smart, and that means doing the work that you need to do in order to improve, then you will be successful and there's a big difference. So language learning and language study is not the same as other types of subject. You need to do it little and often. It is a skill and I can't say this enough. It is a skill and when you're training in a skill you need to improve it by doing it doing it over and over and over and over and it's doing a little bit often is much better than doing a huge amount once so if you do 15 minutes a day it will be far more productive than doing five hours on a saturday so think about that it is a proven strategy for learning a language Focusing on small areas will improve your, your band and your level far more than just doing test after test after test. So when you do your test, look at where you're losing the marks. Don't just say, oh gosh, I only got 27 today, so I need to do another test. You might get 27 again. The chances are that 27 is going to become your your score and that's what you get in the exam you've got to ask yourself why did i get 27 what stopped me from getting 35 what stopped me from getting 40 and look at those areas try and be exposed to english as much as possible so that means listening uh, watching movies fine speaking to people doing bits of writing not necessarily IELTS just English generally remember this is an English exam if your English skills are not good it doesn't matter how many IELTS tests you do you're not going to get a high score it's the fundamental thing about IELTS is that your English level needs to be high and the higher it is the easier the exam and the better you will perform Okay, so better language skills, better study habits equal better results. It stands to reason. There is no argument there. Okay, language is organic. It grows, it develops. The more attention, it's a bit like a plant. If you look after a plant, if you give it water, which reminds me, I need to water my plants today, but that's by the by. If you give it water, if you feed it, it will respond, it will grow, it will look beautiful. Language is a similar thing. It can be just set in aspic if you don't touch it. I mean, if any of you have learned a language before and then you find, this has happened to me. I used to speak very good French. I used to speak fluent Indonesian. And I haven't actually done this for a few years and now I struggle. I can't remember words. I'm sure if I went back to Indonesia, if I spent some time in France, it would all come back. 
But for the moment, if I had to sit down and take an IELTS exam in French or in Indonesian, even though I was fluent in both, I would struggle because it's a long time. So I've been neglecting those. If you neglect it, the same thing will happen. So it's all about doing, not learning about, which is where watching YouTube videos like this can be dangerous. This is telling you how to do it, but if you don't do it, you're not going to improve. It's about activity. It's about speaking and writing and listening and reading. It's not about memorizing things. Memorizing for language, it's good to memorize vocabulary, but unless you use it, what's the point? So that's what's important. You have to work on your skills. It's important to do exam practice, yes, but don't make that your main focus. And by that, I mean, don't just keep going through test after test. I was working with a student yesterday and we were looking at some of the reading questions that she had got wrong. And she said, when I used to practice my IELTS, I never looked at the ones I got wrong. I said, well, how can you learn? How can you improve? She said, exactly. All I did was do the test, look at my score, put it away and do another test. That is not study for IELTS. That is just testing. And that's what you do in the exam. That's not what you should be doing in your preparation. Yes, you might get there, but it will take an awful long time. So don't put the cart before the horse. Make sure your language skills are good before you start doing too much exam pre preparation. Okay, so language can be fun. Doing the language practice is the fun part. Doing the IELTS study is the less fun part, but you need to do both. So why not watch movies? But try and be a bit active in your movie watching. Listen to how things are said not just what's going on. So, oh, how did they say that? Or what was that word? And I'm not asking you to write everything down, but maybe learn three things from the movie that you didn't know before. Look at books, magazines, newspapers. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just spend 15 minutes and look at one article. For example, in newspapers, there are often in the business pages examples of task one data writing that can be very helpful when you do task one. So something about a company or a performance of a company and there'll be a very short thing with some graphs and some data that can be very useful. Find people to speak to. No excuse nowadays. There are lots of people online looking for uh, people to speak to and it's very easy to do. Go and do it. Write anything, just write your own personal diary. That will help. Get some writing into your muscle. Any words you've just learned, try and write them down in sentences. There's a lot you can do without just sitting at your desk doing an IELTS test. Do it, but don't make it your, your sole focus. And in that way, you will, get more, you will get your level to higher than you need, and then in the exam, you will not have a problem. And it will give you a lot more confidence too if your skills are good. If you're, I find when I speak to students, quite often in the first couple of minutes when we're speaking online, they are very nervous. And then by the time we finish the conversation, they are far more fluent. If that can happen in half an hour, 45 minutes, think about what could happen if you do this every day for two, three months. The sky is the limit. Okay. The less, in, the less enjoyable part is the preparation, but again, you have to do it. Okay, so language related activity will make this easier. IELTS will start to make more sense. You'll start to understand better how to answer the reading questions, how to structure your writing, because you've got better language skills generally. It will become a lot easier and you'll look at, okay, like yesterday, the student I mentioned, there were only about six questions we needed to look at. They were yes, no, not given, which I, often they are, but we were able to look at those in detail and work out why she got the wrong answer. And we came up with two or three strategies that she can now use to improve her yes, no, not given. And I know 
if she can improve the yes, no, not given, then her score is going to be something like 36, 37 out of 40, and she's doing general training. So that would give her easily the results she wants when she takes the exam. So work on all these areas, and then you will see the wood for the trees, and you'll be well prepared for your exam. And again, I mentioned this at the beginning, and here are the links. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Now go and do it, and I'll see you on the next video.